If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and welcome to Ask the Doctor. This is the finale of our 11th season, and it's great to be with you today. As you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It is more important than ever to become an informed patient, and we are here to bring you timely health discussions. For those who are new to the show, there are a few ways to get your questions in. One, by calling the live phone line. Two, by visiting our website at netny.net slash doctor. There, you can submit questions and opinions via our forum. And there's even a third way to get through, and that's Twitters. To give you more of a chance of getting your questions in, submit them via Twitter at twitter.com slash netnewyork. For this episode, we have Dr. Claudia Lapidus, attending radiologist at the New York Methodist Hospital. Dr. Emil Bakesh, a medical director of Bishop McGovern Nursing Center, attending geriatric medicine physician at New York Medi Methodist Hospital and the president of the medical staff at the hospital. And Dr. Ivan Grimberger, chief of the Department of Urology at New York Methodist Hospital. And welcome to all of you. I can't believe the finale of our 11th season and uh, just flew by. See Monsignor Bennett out there has missed only one show in the first 11 years of the show. Hi, Monsignor. Good to see you. And um, thought before I get into the news, I just had a couple of Comments. Uh, I want to thank Vinny the Barber. If anybody like, I don't know what you. What do you think of that? Right? Vinny the, does a good job. It's a little shaky with Parkinson's. But. <laughs> yeah. And um, Detective Sanchez Young, an officer monk who've been helping with a little local issue for the police department. Um, and I, I also want to talk about one other thing, and that's Dr. Backash who's holding a special health fair for the 11th season. Is it? Uh, 12th actually. 12th season, at Our Lady uh, Church Virgin. Of the Virgin Mary. It's Church. on Second uh, Street and Eighth Avenue. And it's a blood donor drive and healthcare drive. We'll check blood sugars, do bone density studies, and blood pressures, and have information on advanced directives. And most importantly, you can donate your blood if you're between the ages of 17 and 75. And you're all welcome. Uh, there'll be some refreshments, so please come. And, and then we're going to be having a special Ask the Doctor show. So those who say, I want to get into the live show, how come I can't get in the studio audience like my senior Bennett? Now you have a chance to, to get in. So we expect to see you there at 1 o'clock this Sunday. Uh, you're right. Exactly. Right? Right. Very good. Now, in the news, it's been a busy week, and first thing I want to get into is pesticides. And pesticides have been shown in a study to be related to autism. Now, we don't want to panic people because it's only one study, and it, there have been some criticism. The, the pesticide levels in the blood were tested children eight years old. And, and the problem occurs at a much earlier age, maybe even as the child is developing during the pregnancy. But it seemed that those who had high level of pesticides were more likely to have autism. So the, the main source of the pesticides, well, that was from blueberries, strawberries, celery, and other fruit. So we don't want to get people to stop serving fruit. And even the organic fruit has natural pesticides, which are harmful. So the best thing is to wash the fruit carefully, and let's wait and see what happens, but not to do anything drastic until we get some more on this study in. The second one is an important topic, MRSA. You've heard a lot about this. This is basically. Um, a resistant bacteria to the drug methicillin, so methicillin resistant staph aureus. And basically it's been increasing tenfold in children in the past few years. And the reason seems to be this ab abuse of antibiotics where you bring your child to the doctor's office, you sit there for two hours, the doctor tells you, oh, he's got a virus. And you say, what, I'm not going to get antibiotics? What did I just wait here two hours for? And many doctors give in and say, okay, here's some penicillin, here's erythromycin. As a result, we're developing resistant bugs. So what you can do is, number one, make sure your child has the right hygiene, no sharing of razors, no sharing of towels, drinks, and so on, because you don't want the, the bug going back and forth, but also not insisting that your doctor give an antibiotic when it probably isn't necessary in most cases. So it's a discussion you want to have with your doctor on an individual basis, but this is kind of scary, because if we run out of antibiotics, we're going to be in trouble. Now, another one was nice to hear. People over the age of 50 are much happier and satisfied with their life than those in their 20s and 30s. They didn't worry as much. They had fewer aggravating nights. They slept better. I thought it was nice to hear, you know? Yeah, great. Yeah, I guess um, 
there's some benefits to getting older, yeah, right? Think, yeah. If anybody has any thoughts on that, I'm interested. As you call and tell me why you think the people in the 50s, what, what it is that makes them more comfortable with their life and happier. And then babies. A lot of babies being born now. It seems that babies learn even when they're sleeping. What they did was they took one and two day babies. Now, I don't know which mothers agreed to have their kids tested for this, but they, locked, they put like 100 electrodes on the kid's head and in his face and put him to sleep. And then they'd play a chime, and, you know, a little bell, and then put a puff of air into the kid's eyes, which is not pleasant for anybody. They found that after they did that twice while the kid was sleeping, when the kid heard the bing or the alarm, the eyes would close, anticipating the puff of air, which shows that while they're sleeping, they're thinking and they're learning. So I don't, I don't want any newborn mothers out there <laughs> puffing in the eyes or anything like that, but it's something to think about and, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you know, a way to teach baby is with the record while they're sleeping and playing in the foreign language, they wake up speaking French. I don't know. So. But um, and now this important quiz. This is the last quiz of this year. So everybody out there, get your pens ready. Get ready and your fingers on the phone call, and this is the story. It's a three-syllable word, hideous. A three-syllable word, hideous when you change a single consonant becomes a two-syllable word with no vowel sounds in common. What word is it? So that's a confusing. To me, the question is very confusing, but our Linda Lapitosa was in a little bit of an irritated mood this week, so it's a, <laughs> tough, it's a tough quiz. But we're looking forward, so we'll repeat it again after we go come back from the break. So what we'll do is we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go right to the phones after we talk a little bit to our doctors. The topics are going to be radiology, geriatric medicine, and urology. The number to call is 718-499-6101. You can also tweet in your questions. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash doctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash doctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are radiology, geriatric medicine, and urology. We're going to get to the phones in a minute. Um, we have an exciting show. I'm really excited because some of our best guests from the past are here. Let's just meet them before we find out who's number one on our phone line. Dr. Claudia Lapidus, Hello. who looks beautiful in purple tonight. <laughs> we always wonder what color we're going to see. And uh, Tell us a little bit about you had a, a joyous occasion. Well, thank you for having me back uh, on the show. Um, my son, Daniel, my oldest son, just finished his first year of graduate school, and he's doing very well. I'm very proud Excellent. of him. Daniel, good job out there. Thank you. And um, anyway, what's new in the world of, um, anything new in the world of radiology? Any new studies? That you, any? I think radiology is more and more focusing on um, looking at molecular function. So we're getting, uh, not only we can image things, but we also can look at their function, and we can pick out what is normal and abnormal to look, looking, for example, how, they, how the molecule is um, uh, taking in glucose. For example, PET scan is, is one of the imaging um, modalities that using um, function and how um, molecules are taking up glucose to tell us whether they're normal or not. So looking in, into cellular, molecular... How things are working. Right. Not just what they look like, but why, if they're working right or they're working wrong. Correct. Yeah, interesting. So that is the future. So we're going to talk a lot about mammograms, bone densities, all the, ex all the x-rays as we get involved with our whole discussion. Uh, Dr. Bakish, no stranger to the show, been on probably 10, 10 11 times. Uh, sure, sure. And Thank you. you had a joyous occasion today, just an hour or two earlier. Yeah, I just came back from my uh, son Benjamin's uh, graduation from Columbia in historic preservation. He just got his master's. Fantastic. So I'm very happy about that. Congratulations, Ben. You know, we love you. It's a great, great Ben, honor. great job out there. Great I was job. going to get a little yeah. job maybe and uh, yeah, contribute well, to hopefully, the family. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Grimberg, who also had a joyous occasion, right? It was sort of a joyous occasion. You drove someone back from a great college. Yeah, well, my, my oldest son, Jacob, just finished his first year in college uh, at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Beautiful. He's very proud of him. He made dean's list his first semester. So uh, 
proud of him. My younger son is graduating high school. He's going to be going to college next year. So. Excellent. Well, he's quite a raconteur, Dr. Uh, Grimberger. I wish I could tell you some of the things he had to say before the show. It was very funny. But as a urologist, I'll leave your, to your imagination what he might have been talking about. But sure. excellent job. Um, you know, they, they did a, um, we're going to find out in a minute. I want to build the suspense a little more. They did a contest to see what's the best song ever written. And they had 100 composers get together. And the best song, according to them, was Night and Day. You might have heard Frank Sinatra sing Day and Night, Night and Day. I thought to find out a little bit about our audience, I was going to see what our favorite song is. So as you give the call in, tell me what your favorite song is. If you had one favorite song of all time, it might be the Beatles, it might be Elton John, it could be Frank Sinatra, Rosemary Clooney. So we're going to do that. A little finale season ending thing. But let's see who's on line one. Could it be Maddie? Could it be Joel? Let's see who it is. Hello? Hello, Dr. David. Who is this? Maddie. Maddie, how do you do it? Uh, I got a cold. Oh, you have a cold now? Yeah. And you still were first. The yeah, but I, I feel better. I've been taking that mucus relief stuff. That's great. So what, you yeah. think it's a little hay fever or just a cold? No, just a cold. No, no fever. We've got to keep you well, Maddie. Yeah, I know. You... Listen, I, I have a question. Octomil, 35 milligram. How long could you take that for the bones? Okay. Who, uh, who wants to take that, Dr. Backish? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Actinil is a drug called the bisphosphonate, and some of the studies show benefit in the first five years of taking such drugs, and after five years, there's less of a benefit, and after 10 years, it's probably not as beneficial. So I would say between five and 10 years, it's safe to take the drug, as long as you don't have any side effects, such as reflux, and if you take the drug properly. But still, you need to take vitamin D, calcium, exercise, resistance training, and such. But I would say between five and 10 years. Maddie? Yes. I hope that helps. And where are you going to be the first Tuesday in September next year? I don't know. Are you going to be listening to Ask the Doctor? Where? Uh, Maddie's, uh, Ask the Doctor. Don't forget, next two, the first Tuesday in September, we're going to be back. We're taking a summer break. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were off already. I know. that You were the one writing that letter in? I don't know. <laughs> no, but it's good. No, I don't write letters. No, okay. <laughs> no, but in spite of popular demand, we're still here. So anyway, we'll see you in September. Yeah. Have a great summer. Help of God, yes. All right, thanks, Maddie. We're now going to go to line two. Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Hi. Hi. Are you, a, you watch Ask the Doctor? Yes. Oh, good. Brittany sounds like one of our younger viewers. How old are you? Eleven. Wow. wow. That's great. So I, I hear a rumor that you might have the answer to the quiz. Yeah. Okay, don't say it yet because we have special effects that we like to play here. <laughs> so, is that Kruger? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> Thank you very much for that uh, drum roll. Can we see the question one more time so I could repeat it? Okay. The question had to do with the word hideous. You change it around by removing one consonant, I believe we said, and it'll form a new word in which none of the vowels sound the same, and it's two syllables. Okay? That's as much as I can remember. What do you think the answer is? Um, I think it's hideout. Hideout is absolutely correct. This is, um, are you in the intellectually gifted <laughs> class? You hear that applause, Brittany? What? Brittany's overwhelmed by this. Brittany? Have you ever won this before? No. No. Can you just talk to the phone a little bit? Sure. Very good. So you're going to get a very beautiful plaque coming to your home. Did anybody help you with this? Yes. Oh, it's, oh, it's honest. Honest. Who helped you? My mom. What's her name? Joyce. Very nice. So you watch this nice mother and daughter watching Ask the Doctor on Tuesday nights. It's a good bonding activity. So you're going to get a beautiful plaque inscribed with your name on it, handmade. Okay. Where are you going to hang it? In my room. Beautiful, beautiful. And what's your favorite TV show? Axe the Doctor. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Hey, Brittany, good. thanks for calling in. Great call. All right. Bye. Be well. Bye. Bye. Now we're going to go to Betty. Hi, Betty. Yes, hello. Hi, Betty. Yes, hi. Where are you calling us from? Yes, I'm calling from Flushing, Queens. Very nice out there. What do you like to eat in Flushing? What do I like in Flushing? Yeah. I love the trees. Beautiful trees in that park, the Flushing Meadow Park there? Yes, yeah, so there's a Flushing Meadow Park. But I don't see so much because I'm legally blind. Oh. Yeah, but I, I love Queens. That's I've been nice. here now for like three years. Beautiful, beautiful. Tell me, what's your favorite song of all time? My favorite song? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I like a lot of classical music, Pavarotti. Please hang up. Hi. Betty, we're going to get back to you, okay? 
We had a little trouble with the, um, with the phone lines. We'll get back to Betty in a second. Anyway, we're looking for the favorite song. Let's go now to Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Where are you calling us from? Middle Village, Queens. Oh, Middle Village. Where's the good restaurant in Middle Village? London Lenny's. Ah, oh, nice place. On the, on the uh, Woodhaven Boulevard? Right. Very nice. So what's your favorite song? Are you, do you have one? Moon River. Ah, uh, Moon River. By what's his name? Henry Mancini. Henry Mancini, Mancini. sung by Andy... Um, Andy Williams. Williams. Andy Williams. So we're going to put that down, Moon River. Right now, that's in the lead for the favorite Ask the Doctor show of all time. You know, I have the answer to the quiz, but that girl beat me out. I know. That's, um, <laughs> you got to get it out fast, you know? Yeah. But, so, but what was your answer going to be? Same thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what can we do for you? Well, remember I told you I had the bloating and all that? Yes. Okay. Well, last week I was in the hospital for a week. My sodium level... I, I had a blood test prior, three days prior. Yes. And then all of a sudden, my sodium level dropped down to like 119. Wow. Oh, we were just talking about that with another patient we all had, yes. Mm -hmm. And I had trouble breathing, and uh, so they gave me, you know, my um, oxygen saturation was like 80. So they brought it up to like 92 by giving me oxygen, and then they gave me um, sodium bring the sodium uh -huh. back up. But why would it drop all of a sudden, just like that? Okay, we were talking about some of the causes for low sodium. Uh, sure. you... What's the causes? Okay. Well, it's, it's a disease called syndrome of inappropriate ADH, which is anti-diuretic hormone. And it's a hormone that's produced by the pituitary gland in the brain and the base of the brain. And what happens is in some patients who are fluid overloaded, they can't handle, they can't excrete the water. So basically, the low sodium is actually a problem with fluid overload of water and not actually sodium depletion. So the treatment is fluid restriction. And we only give intravenous sodium infusions when the when this sodium level goes that low. 119 is very low because after it drops that low and lower, you can get confused and disoriented and even have seizures. So it's a very serious problem. It's usually caused by drugs, and in the elderly, it can be caused by just can be caused by normal aging. And it's a very serious problem. You need to be followed for it, mm -hmm. and but usually can be treated with fluid restriction. It never happened before. Yeah. No, well, things can happen if you live long enough. You can get yeah. almost anything. Dr. So. Lapidus, <laughs> as a radiologist, do you see any any cases where you might get this? Well, we have uh, as a radiologist. When I look at um, when low sodiums, there's something called perineoplastic syndromes, where there is, and, and this is not what you have, but um, some patients, for example, with lung cancer, um, they have a perineoplastic syndrome, and they produce the hormone, and their sodium drops. So sometimes yeah. we'll look at the chest to make sure that there is nothing going on in terms of mediastinal masses or lung masses, but that just it, any, any other, any medications or anything? That's... You know, I think... Uh, I think I know there are medications that can. So cause yeah, that. there's a diff in other words, differential diagnosis with, you know, and try and figure out what's the right one that fits your case, not, not necessarily. Right. But anyway, so you're feeling better, right? Not really. I I'm still having trouble breathing. Oh. So they they uh, made me come home with oxygen. Okay. I have to see a pulmonologist. Yeah, you need to see a lung doctor. It's a work in progress. It sounds uh, sounds like. Well, they did a CAT scan of my lungs. Uh huh. And they said it was okay. Well, that's good. Do that's a great. follow up with a pulmonologist. Excellent. So, well, you, you're going to follow up. I hope I, that by the end of the summer, you're going to be all well, and we're going to hear good news in, in the first show in September. I hope so. Okay, say be it. well. Say a prayer. I will. Thank Have you. Have a good day. You too. Sure. Linda is on line one. Hi, Linda. Hi. Hello. Yes, hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Where are you calling us from? Staten Island. Staten Island. Do you have a question for one of our doctors? Yes, it's actually about my mother. She's 84 years old, um, and she has um, a little fracture in her spine. She went to a neurologist. Mm -hmm. The neurologist took an MRI and referred her to a neurosurgeon, and she went to the neurosurgeon, and he recommends non-invasive surgery. Mm -hmm. He said that what he would do is go through the back like laparoscopy, mm -hmm. and what he said is it's some kind of a gel that is resting on the nerve mm -hmm. of the spine, and he said he would scrape that off, and he would also mm -hmm. put cement into the fracture. Mm -hmm. And my mother's like very uneasy about this, mm -hmm. and her medical doctor told her that she should get a second opinion mm -hmm. off Staten Island. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we're going to get a second opinion right now. Okay. Well, the, the procedure that the neurosurgeon suggested is a procedure called kyphoplasty, and basically the crushed vertebrae can be, the height can be reestablished by injecting cement and reinflating the vertebrae. What it does is, it, once this is done, and it's a relatively minor procedure, it's done under local anesthesia, it's really not a major procedure, the pain of the patient goes away almost instantly. So without the surgery, the patient can expect to have pain for about three to four months, and then as the fracture heals, the architecture of the fracture will be crushed, it'll remain crushed. If they reestablish the height of the vertebrae, the pain will go away almost immediately, and you know she'll be back to her normal functioning level a little bit quicker. Long-term studies, though, don't show benefit for kyphoplasty in the long run. If you, if you look at these patients, the patients that are treated with surgery and the patients that aren't, in the end, they both, you know, functionally are about the same. But the main difference is in the first three months, there's much more comfort level if you have the kyphoplasty. I think that's a good, good answer. Anybody else? I think important is that she had an MRI, which means they looked at all his vertebral bodies, not just the one that had the fracture, and there's nothing wrong with any other ones, which is very important as well, that the bone marrow, uh, as they're looking at it, an MRI looks good and other vertebral mm -hmm. bodies. That's important. So it's kind of screening to make sure that there is nothing else going on in the spine. So we hope that helps you. You got a right. second and third opinion. Right. And I think we will go for the second opinion. Um, also, he was saying something about a patch that he was going to put on. That I didn't understand. I mm -hmm. have to get more details, but he said this patch might move around. I don't know what he mean by that. Yeah, you've got to get us more details and we can... Well, there's, there's different kinds of patches we put on patient's skin. There's a patch called lidoderm patch, which is lidocaine, which is local anesthetic. There's a flector patch, which is basically a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, like a Motrin family aspirin drug. And then there's a dorgesic patch, which is fentanyl, which is an opiate, which is a narcotic patch. And those are basically the prescription patches. The over-the-counter patches are like Salon Pass, which is a Chinese remedy, which is a much more weaker patch. But he's probably talking about some sort of pain patch for uh, treatment of the patient's pain. Linda, thanks a lot for the call. Okay. What's thanks. your favorite song, Linda? Uh, Summer Breeze by Frank Sinatra. That's a good one. Oh, okay. A good one. Uh, very good. I'm putting that down. Okay. It may be our official song. Okay. Take okay. care. Okay. I wanted to ask Dr. Grimberg a question before we get to Larry. I hear a lot of ads for Vi Viagra, Cialis, all this. Number one, is it safe for everyone to take? Are the, are the people who shouldn't be taking it who might slip through without seeing a doctor and ordering it via the mail and so on? I think, I think that for most people, for the great majority of people, this is, these are very safe drugs. Uh, but uh, they can be very potentially very dangerous in certain situations. So, uh, for example, for patients who are taking any of the nitrates like nitroglycerin or, or Imdur and so on, uh, the combination can be deadly because the blood pressure can drop to basically nothing. Um, so it's very important to not to just uh, take this medication from get it borrowed from a friend or, or order in line. First of all, if you order in line, you're not sure what you're actually getting. So there's been a lot of fakes out there and they could be very dangerous. But um, these drugs, some, a lot of patients are afraid about these drugs because they heard a lot of bad mm -hmm. stories about drugs causing heart attacks and making people blind and so on. And in fact, for most people, these drugs are extremely safe and effective. But it, but it is important to, to get it through a doctor sort of to make sure that there are no uh, contraindications. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go now to Larry. Hi, Larry. Uh, Dr. Garner, how are you? Is this Larry from Rockland County? Larry from Rockland Amazing. County. Amazing. Amazing. He watches on the computer every Tuesday night. Right, and I had a little difficulty with my computer when I came home from my uh, granddaughter's um, uh, was married, and I came home and I wanted to check my email last night. It didn't work. Spent half a day oh. uh, fixing it just to be able to watch the show tonight. Thank you. So you got it fixed in time. Yes, the, yes. What do you think of the last show? This is our last show of the season. You enjoying yes, it? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very much so. And uh, I wanted to ask Dr. Grumbacher, if I have the name correctly, uh, a question about uh, a pharmaceutical, if I may. Sure. Uh, um, I, was, uh, I, I have a BPH condition, and I've been taking um, Proscar and Terazosin. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I was recently prescribed a, a product called um, Rapaflow, and um, uh, a 30 day supply of that is 104 bucks. And I, I would like to know the difference between what 
that does and terazosin does. Well, and, and were you having a problem still on, on the medications that you were on before? No, I, I got up uh, three times a night to do my thing, and um, the, they said this was supposed to correct that. Right. Well, um, Rapiflu is one of the newest drugs for BPH, and, and, but it belongs to the same class of drugs as terazosin, which used to be called Hytrin before it became generic. Right. And it's, it's in the class of drugs called alpha blockers which uh, these medications don't shrink the prostate, they relax the prostate so they decrease the resistance to, to the flow so, so that uh, urination gets better and bladder empties better. Now, uh, I, the, uh, forgive me for intruding, but yeah. um, I also take Proscar. Did I say that? Did right, I yes. Okay. And, and the Proscar is the one that, that shrinks the prostate and more and more we're using the combination of an alpha blocker to relax the prostate and a, and a medication like Proscar or Avidar to, to shrink it. And the combination works the best, especially for people who have a very large prostate. So, so Rapliflo is, is, is a new drug. Uh, honestly, it, it's, the effect is probably not that much different than, than terazosin, depending on the dose of terazosin. How much are you taking? Um, the five milligram, and sometimes if uh, I feel that um, I, you know, I'm having more difficulty, I'll take a 10 milligram. Right. But these Rapiflow things are 8 milligram capsules. Yeah, but those things are not necessarily equivalent. So the, the 8 milligram uh, capsule of Rapiflow is probably pretty much the same as, as, as your 5 milligram of terazosin. So my, my feeling is that if you're having still difficulties, uh, you probably s should see a urologist and probably have some other tests to see what, what needs to be done, where the problem is, whether it's truly in the prostate or whether there's a problem with your bladder. But uh, I think that you know, spending a lot of money out of pocket for a medication that's, that's new but not necessarily that much different, probably not what you need. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Larry, uh, yes, thanks Dr. for being a loyal listener. We'll see you in September, the first Tuesday in September. What's your favorite song, by the way? Um, one of my favorites is, is, is Star Eyes. Star Eyes, I don't know, can you sing that? Star Eyes, when if ever will my lips know, is it for me who those eyes glow? Wait, 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 does this pro scar have the effect of bad singing? <laughs> There's something here I don't get. Yeah, that, that was, that's one of my, my, my assets. I, when I was in my music class in, the, the, in third grade or fourth grade, the teacher told me that I was a listener. So, <laughs> I, I, Thanks I a lot, have a great singing. summer. You too, be well. Thank though. you. Star Eyes, I didn't know that one. I Still, know anybody even, you know it? No, I didn't. Okay, Star Eyes. What we're going to do now, we're going to take a short break. All this excitement, we have to calm down a little bit. When we come back, we're going to be talking about radiology, geriatric medicine, and urology. The number is 718-499-6101. Remember, you can tweet the questions at twitter.com slash netnewyork. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are radiology, geriatric medicine, and urology. With me, I have Dr. Claudia Lapidus, a radiologist, Dr. Emil Bakash, a geriatric medicine specialist, and Dr. Ivan Grimberger, a urologist. Now let's get right back to our busy phone lines. Let's see, we now have Ada with us. No, I think it's, this may not be Ada, hello? Hello? I'm sorry, it's not Ader, is it? This Who is Howard. This? Howard. Howard. Very. Howard? Yes. How are you doing? Where are you calling us from? Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan. We like the Manhattan calls. We're stretched out this year. For those who don't know, we entered Manhattan. We're in all the boroughs, and uh, we're starting to pick up the calls. Which part of the city are you in? Um, Upper West Side, around 72nd Street. Very nice. A beautiful area. That really is taking off, huh? It is, yes. Yeah. So um, what can we do for you? I just wanted to mention a song called Return to Me by Connie Francis. Oh, Return to Me. Connie Francis had some life, huh? She had a tough time of it. Yes, but this song is beautiful. If you ever hear it, if you ever get a chance to hear it, you should hear it. She was at the, um, the, the concert 
Where was that, Dr. Lapidus? Um, Seabreeze or um, Lee. Sea breeze in it on Brighton Beach. There's this in, next to uh, Boardwalk. There's a beautiful park, and she was there last summer. It was a very nice concert. And she was with Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Very nice. But we put, we've got it down. Return to me. It's up there, right on the top of the list right now. One vote could shift this whole election <laughs> right now. So, do you ever read a Patola up there? No, I think you we you got. To I haven't. No. Oh, yeah, Patola. It's a good restaurant. It's on. Um, it's in the 80s. It's next to Nice Matan. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm on a diet, actually. Oh, but thank you for this call, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Now we're going to try Ada. Hi, Ada. Hi. Sorry we had a little uh, glitch there. Hi, how you doing? Okay, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Where are you calling us from? Starrett City. Starrett City. I remember that place well. Cause what the, what's the name of that new shopping center? Gateway Mall. Gateway. Has anybody been there? No. Yes, yeah, I've been over there a couple of times. Yeah, they, they, they put a new street, Erskine Avenue? Or Erskine yes, street? Erskine. Where, is that named after the Dodger call Erskine or no? Oh, I wouldn't know. I wonder if it could be, could be. Could be. Anybody knows, let us know. But what can we do for you out there? Yes, I wanted to ask the question. I have a pain that uh, uh, starts in my hip bone on the left-hand side, and it goes all the way down my leg. Okay. And I was just wondering, you know, I was told by the doctor it's really in my back. Just a couple of questions. Um, are you, how much do you weigh? Oh, I weigh about um, 145. How tall? Uh, 143. It goes up and down between those uh -huh. two. How tall are you? How high? How, what's your height? Oh, my height, I'm um, 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. So you're a little bit overweight. A little bit. Not mm -hmm. bad. Do you find yourself a little overweight or you say normal? Oh, no, I would say normal because really I used to be even smaller than this, you know, when I was younger. Okay, let's see what, if anybody gets an idea. Where do you think this pain could be coming from? Well, pain in the hip um, can be due to pain from the hip or it can be due to pain in the back. Sometimes the area where you feel the pain could be referred pain. Um, there are certain ways of finding out through physical examination and rotating your hip and then taking x-rays of your hip and your back to see. Uh, pain in your hip can radiate to your knee and pain in your back can radiate to your hip and down your leg. So it is possible it's from your back. There's several things that can cause pain like a herniated disc um, you can have arthritis of your hip as well and, and uh, several things like sciatica, which is a pinch nerve in your back which can radiate the pain all the way down your leg, you know, to your knee or to your heel. So that's the differential diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But the doctor on examining you and taking certain x-rays can, can determine that. I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Lapidus, because I'm asked this a lot, what's the difference between a CAT scan and an MRI? Is one better for it, one is more harmful, one is not more harmful? What is the difference? Well, in this particular case, um, for Ada, um, I would start out with just doing an x-ray of the hip and to see how much arthritis is there and see what the hip looks like. And then the question with the back, I would go on to the MRI because the MRI is not only can show us what the bone looks like, but it also will show us what the discs look like and whether there is a herniated disc and if there is, whether that corresponds to the symptoms that you're having. So MRI is very good to look at the back, to look at the nerves, to look at the discs, and to look at the vertebras. A CAT scan by itself, if you got a CAT scan of the spine because you couldn't get an MRI, if you had a pacemaker, for example, you could not have an MRI of the spine, but um, the CAT scan will do a very good job with the bone um, and some of the discs, but it's not as good as looking at the nerve roots and whether they're being compressed by the disc. So if you can, um, to look at the discs, to look at the nerve roots, MRI of the back is the best. If not, then we can do a CAT scan and, and see what information we get from it. And Dr. Gumber, does kind of stone present like this? Well, typically, it's not a typical type mm -hmm. of presentation for stones. Uh, certainly, the, uh, if, you have a, if you pass a kidney stone, you can get pain in the lower back. But more typically, it's, it's uh, going towards the groin rather than the hip. And, 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 and the fact that the pain is going down the leg is not very typical for kidney stones. And I just want to mention in terms of radiation, uh, MRI, there is no radiation. CAT scan, there is. Ada? Yeah. I hope that helps you. What's your bid for the top song? Of Ask the Doctor. <laughs> Um, you, you see, well, I'm really into gospel, so we have to be Wonderful Counselor by the Hawkins Singers. Wonderful Counselor. Yes. Very nice. We're putting that down. Right now it's got a good chance. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Have a great summer. Okay. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Take bye. care. We're now going to go to Denise. Hi, Denise. 
Denise? Yes. Hi, is that how you pronounce it, Denise? Yes. It's a nice name. Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn, downtown. Downtown, near Court Street? Yes. What's going on there? A lot of big buildings going up. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you live in one of those, or you're in the old-time place? Old-time place. Yeah. You ever read at a place there called Queen? Queen, no. On Court Street. Where's your favorite place? Um, all sorts of things. <laughs> you don't have a favorite? No. <laughs> it's okay. What, what can we do for you? Uh, when I urine, I have a lot of, like, suds and bubbles. Okay, I didn't hear that part. Did you, did you, can you just repeat that when you urine? What? When I urine, I have like a lot of bubbles and suds. Okay, okay. So let's talk to Grimberg. A lot of bubbles, suds. Well, it's, it's, it's not unusual to have some, some suds and even some bubbles in the urine, but uh, if, it's, uh, if it's an excessive amount or if, it, if it's associated with, with some debris uh, or, or even sometimes patients feel even passage of air mm -hmm. with urination, that could be a sign of a, of a uh, what's called, called a vesicle fistula, where there's a connection that forms between the colon and mm -hmm. the bladder. And uh, that could be a, as a result of uh, an infection or, or a, a diverticulitis, or sometimes cancer. Denise, how old are you? 32. 32. Yeah. Do you have any children? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, I think what Dr. Grunberg is saying is important to consider. Did you hear him? Not quite. Yeah, he's saying there may be a connection between the bladder and, and you may get some air coming out as you urinate that may be a problem that needs to be fixed. It could get infected. It may be from previous infection, um, even, God forbid, a tumor. Not that you have that, but these are possibilities. So it's important to see a urologist on this. Okay. Dr. Dr. Lapidus? If I may suggest, some of the things that you could do is, for example, when you, uh, in terms of imaging, because I'm a radiologist, you can get an ultrasound looking at the bladder and see how the bladder looks, what the thickness of the wall of the bladder, is it normal, is it not, what, is there debris, obvious debris in the bladder. And the, other cat, and the other exam that's very good is a CAT scan because any air in the bladder we can visualize on the CAT scan and we can also see all the surrounding a bowel, we can see the uterus, we can see the cervix, so we can evaluate the bladder itself and all uh, the structures around it so we may be able to give you an answer as well. So in terms of imaging, an ultrasound or a CAT scan. Denise? Yeah, I had a, I had a um, CAT scan of the pelvic and abdominal and I had a ultrasound. Very Everything good. Everything came back normal. That's good. Great. That's any thoughts? Good. Well, I think, you know, a dipstick urine analysis would be my first thought to see if you have any protein in your urine. I think if that's normal and there's no blood and there's no protein and there's no sediment, you know, on the microscopic urine analysis, mm -hmm. I would just forget about it. And just, you know, it's probably nothing to worry about. Denise, oh, what, what's your favorite song for your, your bid for the top song? Um, Britney Spears, Baby, Give Me One More Chance. Ah, we're getting, see, we're, our demographics just went down about 70 years. <laughs> Very good. Britney, give me one more chance. What do you think? She settled herself down now? You think she's going to be out of the woods? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> that other one, Lindsay Lohan, seems to have a problem. You read the post. So, anyway, take care. Have okay. a great summer. Thank you. Take care. Let's go to Betty. Who, Betty, I think we accidentally cut off before. Hi, Betty. Yes, hi. Where are you calling us from? Yeah, I'm calling from Flushing, Queens. Oh, you haven't moved. You're still, still there. You've been in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you ever eat out there in, um, you know what, I, what's your favorite place out there to eat? Oh, my favorite place out here is uh, Austin Street. Oh, a lot of restaurants in Austin Street. Yeah, plenty of restaurants. And also, I like to... A lot of the, of the trees. The trees. That's the trees. my favorite thing. Is that a good one? I have a breathing condition. Oh, the trees. The I thought it was a restaurant. The sorry, sorry. Oh, the restaurants. Yes, I like um, Jackie um, Roberts. Jackie Robinson. That's the highway, isn't it? Well, you, uh, <laughs> I'm very sure it's a picnic. No, 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 no. The restaurant there. I always forget names. I can't see well. <laughs> right. So, so that's why. But Betty, what can we do for you? Yes, now I, I had a question about um, vitamin D3. Now, my, my level is very low. It's um, at 11, and um, they said it should be up to 30, and I want to know how long will it get to um, 30 because I'm taking vitamin D3 1,000 units um, okay. every day, and how long will it get me to, how yeah. long will it take to get to um, 30? 
or should I, um, well, what is the... Um, What's the best level? How old are you? Well, I'm 50. 50, okay. Let's Just see, Dr. Dr. Baggis, how much should she be taking? Well, I think, you know, 2,000 units a day, I think, is a new recommendation. So you can take 2,000 units a day, and um, that should raise your level in a couple of months. You can have a repeat, you know, vitamin mm -hmm. D3 level at that time and see if it go goes up. So I think just take it, you know, 2,000, you can get it over the counter. If that doesn't work, there are some prescription forms of vitamin D that might be absorbed a little bit easier. Um, there's one called calcitrol. You know, which comes in 0.25 micrograms and 0.5 micrograms. You may need to switch to that if the regular vitamin D3 isn't absorbed properly. Interesting. So you got that, Betty? If you're on. Well, that, yes, but what what do you mean when you say absorb um, correctly? What I mean is that uh, sometimes we take vitamins and it doesn't actually get, even though we swallow it and it gets into our stomach, it doesn't cross over into our bloodstreams, oh. so it doesn't actually get in. So sometimes if you're taking other medications, it interferes with the, uh, the drug getting inside your body, even though you're swallowing it. For example, if you take a drug like Prilosec, you'll have vitamin D malabsorption. It causes less absorption of these drugs. So it can predispose you to getting vitamin D deficiency. Oh, hmm. so, so what is the, the correct one that I should that so I How should many, 2,000 units? Yeah, 2,000 units. 2,000 units, Betty. Betty, before we go, what's your song? Oh, um... I like so um, I am unwritten. I am the Dickens. <laughs> Who's that? Sorry, I am unwritten. No, the song is unwritten. Unwritten. Yes. How does it go? Um, can't say. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's funny. All right, maybe oh. we'll just leave it as unwritten. I I am unwritten. Yes, it's all. Okay. No, it's called just called okay. unwritten. Betty, excellent. Just don't be disappointed. Can I go back with a? I have a question on D replacement. No, but I, I got to move on. But don't be disappointed if your song doesn't win. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. We're now going to go to Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Oh, hi, Doctor. Just a beautiful are you? laugh, Rosemary. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. I'm doing great. What's your song? Your favorite one? Oh well, I was just singing it. I like, well, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I like um, Frank Sinatra, My Way. Oh, it's a great song. It used to be uh, he <laughs> right. My Way. Right, and my husband likes um, Everybody Loves Somebody Sometimes. Oh, uh, who sings that? Dean Martin. Correct. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, everybody, it, it, one vote can swing this whole, right now you have so many. What was your wedding song? <laughs> oh, uh, my wedding song, oh, I can't even remember. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> All right, the husband wants me oh, to through the years, through the years. Through the years. Yes, by Kenny, what's his name? Kenny, what's his name? I can't remember. Um, Kenny Rogers, through the years. Through the years, yes. Let me down. Yeah, that's all. Okay, okay, no more drinks for you. Uh, <laughs> okay, what's the question? Okay, my question is, uh, say a urology physical exam. Is there any specific age where you should, you know, your husband should go to have this exam? And I want to also ask the I wife, too, because I'm hearing a lot of men questions. First, right. when should the man visit you? Well, I think that definitely uh, no later than 50, starting mm -hmm. at the age of 50. But uh, obviously, that's for men who don't have any symptoms. Uh, right. The, uh, it, and the, the one of the things that we obviously concentrate on these days is, is prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And so for, for <coughs> men who, are, who have no family history of prostate cancer, that we, we generally recommend starting at the age of 50 okay. and then annually after that. Right. For men who have family history or for African Americans who mm -hmm. tend to have a higher uh, chance of developing prostate cancer earlier, we recommend starting at 40. Okay. 40. And I know the PSA test, but now I don't think that's too accurate anymore or something, right? Well, it's, it's still an excellent test. There's okay. a lot of controversy and, and some of it is not warranted. And, okay. and it just, it's an excellent test if it's, mm -hmm. if it's looked at in the proper context. Rosemary, okay. you can't yes. find a better urologist than Dr. <laughs> Grunberger. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'll see you in Manchester, Vermont. Oh, don't forget, we're going to be uh, <laughs> August, August 14th. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to uh, go to that playhouse, Dorset Playhouse. The playhouse, right, right. We'll, we'll see you there. Okay. Take <laughs> see care. You. Bye. Bye. One of our favorite listeners to the show. Patty? Yeah. Hi, Patty. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks okay. for taking my call. Sure. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Staten Island. Oh, great. What, what's the, I never can find the number one place in Staten Island. What, what do you think? Well, every year uh, for my Christmas party, we go to Fushimi's. It's a Japanese restaurant on Richmond Road. Yeah. And it's great food, great atmosphere. 
so uh, we go there every year. Otherwise, we just go to local, like Outback or TGIF. Okay, sashimi. So we're going to have to try that. What's, your fa what's the song now while I got you before we get to your Well, question? i got to say Summer Breeze. I, I love oh, that song. That's the, right now in the lead. You just jumped in the lead with Summer oh, good. Breeze. Good, good. That's a great. Who else sings it? I think Frank Sinatra is the only one I ever heard sing that. Yeah, I think so. Great okay. song. So okay. what's the question? Okay, my question is this. My husband is 51, and I just had to rush him to the hospital on Friday night. Uh, he was having chest pains. And it turned out he had a 98% blockage wow. in an artery, which already has a stent. So the, the, stent, the second stent was placed a little higher. He's fine now. But I just want to know, like, what is the recovery time on that? Right. This is into, so, uh, Dr. Backish? Well, if he had the stent put in and he did not have a heart attack, no. you know, he can go back to his normal activity, you know, right away. If he didn't have any myocardial injury or muscle injury, and they would have told you that because they test uh, his blood and they test these tests called troponin levels. If this troponin level and the other enzymes that they test were normal and he just had a stent and he's probably fine. In fact, it's good that he exercises. He goes back on his aspirin, his Plavix, and some sort of lipid-lowering drug. And they probably will put him on a beta blocker and sometimes they put you on another drug called an ACE inhibitor and, you know, get on some sort of uh, regular routine of exercise. So, you know, he should get back to normal in a very quick period of time. Very important that exercise, right? Even though, you know, you, some people feel I had a heart attack, I was stand, I better not exercise. That's the worst thing you can do. Right. Any, any tips, Dr. Grimber? I agree. I think, I, I think the, the nice thing about these procedures is that they're minimally invasive and, and you can really go back to normal activities very quickly. And there are tests that could pick this up in advance. There's some radiographic tests, some CAT scans of the coronary arteries that are somewhat controversial. They're not all paid for, but they can be of use, and angiograms, of course. So we hope he does well. And now we're going to go to Alan. Hi, Alan. Hey, how you feel? How you doing? Where are you calling us from? Uh, from Manhattan. Oh, another Manhattan caller. Which part? Uh, downtown Chelsea. In the downtown Chelsea area? Right. That's a good neighborhood, right? A lot of clubs, a lot of action there. Clubs, a lot of action. Yeah, yeah. You're, you sound like you're gearing up for a big night. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. What can we? What's your favorite song? Um, when you say songs, I don't know. I have so many songs. What, uh, what category of? Anyone. You like? If you have one last song to hear. Uh, the old days. The I old, love old music. days. That's right. I just love music. That's the name of the song. The street. What are they called? The street train. No, they. The name of the group is the old days. Oh, the old days. The old jays. Old day like in juice. Old jays. Yeah, didn't they do the, the peace train or something? Soul right, train. they did the peace, uh, love train. The, the love train. Right. Um, and the, the one I like is I love music. Ah, I love music. Very good. So what can we do for you? I just wanted to ask you a question on um, the issue of um, I get up about three times a night to go to the bathroom to urinate. Would that be any... Um, you know, sometimes, you know, um, it's, it's kind of, you know, aggravating to get up in the middle of sleep. To, sure. to, How old are you? I'm, uh, I'll be uh, 61 in June. Got a young voice. The, yeah. See Dr. Grimberger. Well, I think that the most common cause for, for getting up at night for somebody in your age is an enlarged prostate that's putting pressure on the bladder and uh, putting some resistance on the, the flow of the urine so the bladder tends to become a little bit overactive. However, there are other causes potentially for this. It could be a primary bladder problem. It could be a sign of diabetes um, and, or sometimes an infection. So, but uh, I mean, something that should be checked out because you don't have to accept getting up three times at night. It's not, it's not a lot of fun. You're losing a lot of sleep. So um, you probably should see a urologist and, and have this checked out because if it is an enlarged prostate, there are some very simple tests that could be done and, and, and medications or procedures that can help you. Well, is, it, is, is it normal to get up even once at night? Well, well it's, no. you know, it's, it, it, it's not unusual to get up once, but, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to accept that. So a lot of it, it, it really varies from, from person to person. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people, uh, some people get up three, four times at night and go right back to sleep and don't even remember in the morning. It's okay. Uh, but it's good if you make it to the bathroom. Right. That's the important <laughs> yeah. part. But anyway, so uh, Alan? Yes. Any other question? Uh, yes. Is there any type of uh, natural medicines that you could take for that? I was mm. taking, I used to take some Roex, Roex, R-O-E-X, Roex, uh, 
natural vitamins uh-huh. um, called uh, Immortal, and I stopped taking it. But but it was good. It, it was real good. But uh, you know, I um, I just stopped taking it because it cost so much. Mm-hmm. Well, there there is a uh, one natural product called Saw Palmetto, and it's, it comes from a, a plant that grows in in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. And, what do you call it that, again? Saw Palmetto. Oh, saw palmetto, and, right. That's, and that's, that's, and that, that's been shown to be beneficial uh, for, for mm-hmm. some men. And, and, and I use it quite a bit with my patients who have early uh, enlarged prostate symptoms. And, and, and there's a lot of medications that you could see over the counter that, that, are, that are claimed to help with the prostate. They're all based on the saw palmetto. And, 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 and the key is if you want to try it, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. I would just get pure soap palmetto and, and don't get all the other stuff that, you know, there's a lot of products there that have uh, 15 different or more, uh, pro, you know, uh, factors that do absolutely nothing. But Alan, soap palmetto try, I think can be helpful. Try and get into the urologist and let him evaluate it. Any other tips before we move on? No. No. Okay. Alan, thanks for calling. All right, thank you. Have a good summer. Okay, we're now going to go to Alex. Hi, Alex. Alex? Hi, how are you? Oh, it's a, it's a girl, Alex. How, <laughs> how are you doing? Where are you calling from? Um, upper Manhattan. Oh, on the west side or east side? Upper west side, uh-huh, right good. around Washington Heights area. Oh, really up there. Yeah, very nice. Thank Did you. you see In the Heights? I'm sorry? Did you see the play In the Heights? No, I've heard of it, but haven't That's seen it. That's a great play, great, great musical. Well, thank you for the info. What's your favorite restaurant up there in the Heights? Um, actually, I'm kind of not a big restaurant person. I like to eat organic, so I'd rather eat at home That's than good. eat out. Try to keep it simple. We were just talking a little about organic food and pesticides. Did you hear that at the beginning? And yes. The, yeah. I, I kind of had to go ahead at your program because I kind of tuned into you a little late, and I heard your comments on that and also about um, antibiotics. Totally agree with you on both issues. Very good. And uh, what's your favorite? Before we move on, the favorite song from Washington Heights, what would it be? Didn't see it. So, uh, well, I'm... No, not the play from, from you. Oh, um, well, let's see. At my age, I think I'm kind of like everything. I love opera, and I love the, uh, the Motown era, and I, I just kind of like all kinds of music. Very good. You like Frankie Valli and his Motown time? Abs- oh, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to put him down. For Grease is the word? Oh, I mean, that era was that <laughs> okay. was it. <laughs> Very good. What can we do for you? Yes, thank you. Um, I had a couple questions. I'll try to make it brief. Uh, one is that um, I've had some doctors try to figure out what's wrong, and nobody seems to come up with any answers. I basically, um, when I stand up to brush my teeth or even to do any kitchen work or, or standing up anywhere, I'll look down. This has kind of happened within the last year, and my legs are kind of a purplish red. Mm. And um, I can't figure out what it is. I've had all the bloods done. Um, my blood pressure, uh, my cholesterol, uh, diabetes. Um, you know, I, try, I asked him, you know, to make it simple, would you cons- give me a grade level on my A, B, C, D? He goes, like, A+. Plus. You have none of, you know. For, your, for my age, 57, I have no symptoms. You know, I don't eat meat. Um, I don't take, you know, any of the candy or the sugars or anything. I just try to, you know, vegetables, fruit, natural, organic. And uh, my, my weight is about 123, 5, 7 and a half. So I try to keep everything, you know, healthy and well. But yet when uh, these legs turn this purplish red. And, I mean, it's, you know, I was thinking diabetes, but I've tested more than once and negative. That can't figure out what's going on there. It's a little scary to look down and see your legs that color, and I push with my finger and so Alex, it's almost like I'm, a sunburn. Because we're getting to the end, and I want to make sure we get this in. I'm going okay. to ask all three of our panelists to weigh in. Dr. Lapidus. Well, uh, the only thing I can think of, basically, it's when you when you bend down. Just just tell me when that happens. When do they t- when do your legs turn purple? When I'm horizontal, I'm fine. It's when I'm standing up, like you know, in a certain position for you know any amount of time. Standing up, just standing up. Tricky. Um, again, I'm an imager, so I would make sure, for example, that uh, looking at your blood vessels of your leg, uh, to make sure that your veins are, are, are uh, normal mm-hmm. veins, that there is no evidence of thrombus in, <clears throat> in those veins. Or, for example, some people have valves in veins where not, which there are insufficient, so they don't have normal blood return uh, from the legs uh, to, the, um, to your heart. So I would, as an imager, I would look at your blood vessels, in particular the veins, and make sure that they open and they are normal. Dr. Bagish? Yeah, I, I would say that it sounds like you might have a condition called venous insufficiency, and the treatment is compression stockings, where you just wear support stockings. And there's really nothing, if it is that condition, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to get rid of the coloring. But that can be 
easily diagnosed by a Doppler study of your lower extremities and an examination. Dr. Grimberger. I agree. I think this definitely sounds like a vascular a circulatory problem. Alex, we got to move on. I'm sorry. I hope that helps. Ba bottom line doesn't sound dangerous. No, t no chance of uh, clotting or anything like no. that. No. No. Get that test that Dr. Peters was talking about, the Doppler. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Take care. We're now going to go to Myra, who's been waiting patiently. Hi, Myra. Hi. How are you? Good. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. Oh, did we ever hear from you before? Yes. Did they come up with any restaurants out there yet? No. No, you said we can't find a restaurant in Brownsville. <laughs> no. So, but what about a song? You must have a favorite song. Okay, my favorite group, because I'm from the 50s also, um, is The Drifters. But oh. if I had to pick a song by Frank Sinatra, it would definitely definitely be my way. In fact, I even changed the words to my way and made it God's way. So Very, I love that song. Yeah. We have to hear that one time. So my <laughs> way now jumped to the lead uh, tied with Summer Breeze. You're going with my way, right? Yes, with my way. Okay, my way and Summer Breeze are neck and neck. What can oh, we do? okay. What can we no, do for I, you? I haven't been feeling good for the last three or four days. Every time I eat, I become very nauseous. So I've been drinking ginger tea, which uh, is like an old remedy. I don't know if that's good for you or not. But also, I suffer from anxiety, and I have been taking this pill called Boost Paw. So I don't know if that's what's causing the nausea or not. So what do you all think? Myra, I'm going to have to let Dr. Backish give you a 30-second answer, okay? Okay. Here it comes. All right. Well, Buspar is an anti-anxiety drug. It's possible that's causing the nausea, but there's several other things that can cause nausea, including gastritis, hyperacidity, too much acid in your stomach. Uh -huh. So you might need to be worked up as far as someone may have to look down with an endoscope to see, you know, inside your stomach to see if you have an ulcer. Okay. And you might need a little bit of a sonogram to check your pancreas gallbladder out also to make sure there's no Oh, I just had a gallbladder, my gallbladder removed in January, January. Okay, well then you might have, you might have okay. bile gastritis. Sometimes the bile without the gallbladder comes back up into the stomach and irritates it. Thanks so, so much, Myra. Okay. Myra? All right, yes. We're going to hear from you in the fall, I hope. See you I'll in September. I'll see you in September, yes. By the happenings, very good. And that's, that's really, yeah, I can't believe how this show flew by. But I told you, these guests, when you have three guests like this, you know what, you know what mm -hmm. to expect here. And the winning song, Summer Breeze, because my daughter Eve is her favorite song, and it's yeah. coming up to be the summer. Do we have that one back there? They're going to look for it. Okay, that's it for this season of Ask the Doctor. Been a great 11th season. I want to thank Dr. Claudia Lapidus, Dr. Emil Bakash, Dr. Ivan Grunberger for coming in. We hope we were able to help you. It's good to remember you should be proactive about your own health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions like we heard tonight. And during our off season, you can still submit your questions through our online forum. Visit netny.net slash askthedoctor. You can also watch my video blogs and read our tablet column, updated weekly. And for those who like to tweet, follow us at Twitter, Thank you to Linda Lapitosa, the quiz master, one of the best quiz masters in the business. I mean, for any bit quiz master. The brain, for the brain teasers every week. And we'll see you in the fall. In the meantime, watch past episodes every morning at 10 a.m., Monday to Friday. Goodbye, have a safe and healthy summer, and I'll see you in the tablet.